<laughs> yeah. In 2012, we played uh, the, the, yeah, the Joint at First Half for your re-election campaign. Yes, you did. And yes, I had a full horn section. And they used to do this like <laughs> New Orleans thing that I thought you would dig, where like the horn oh, yeah. section, we would end the song, my song called Take Me Home, and they would walk through the crowd. And so yep. the, the leader of the horn section, this Jewish brother named Jordan Katz, shout out Jordan Katz, was like, hey, Jordan. Congressman, do you want to do you want to walk with us? We're going to march through the crowd and like we'll be following you like this, like, you know, like this band following <laughs> you. And you were like, yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Let's do that. So we're walking. And then Shantae Palmer, who's this African-American brother playing the, the, the yeah. trombone. He's about six foot six. And so he's walking in front and he smacked you in the dome. With the, <laughs> he hit you in the head with the trombone. Hey, man, on a live show, we didn't let, anything could happen. Right, man, we didn't let him live that down, man. I mean, the entire rest of the tour, we're like, man. He would say, like, you guys, I wonder, is it, is it okay if I run over there and just grab a burrito from that stand real quick? And we'd be like, I mean, you did try to assassinate the congressman with your drum. <laughs> <laughs> we have to factor this in. I, mean, I, I don't know, man. It's hard. You know, it's hard. That's my friend, man. You smacked him in the head with it. It's the, deep, man. You know what I mean? Oh, man. We had a wonderful night that night. That and I'm going to tell you who I met that mm. night. This is a this is an interesting tie-in, talking about, like, weird happenings. There was a woman there whose name is Courtney Ross. I can mention her name because she was a witness in the case. Yeah. And Courtney was a friend of yours. She's a friend of mine. And Courtney, um, like, on, on May 20. 7th or 6th, 2020, calls me, Cave! Yeah, Courtney, what's up? Cave, they gonna, they gonna try to, they gonna try to ruin our boy that this is wrong, what they gonna do? I'm like, what are you talking about? George Floyd, that was my man, yeah. that was my partner. I'm like, wait a minute, Courtney, you telling me that the man who people are protesting in honor of, and then, you know, because of what happened to him, is your intimate partner. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to tell you, Gabe. And you and I both know Courtney. If she's you hear Courtney on the phone, person, you're right? like, this is a black woman from... <laughs> <laughs> from <laughs> right, 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 right. Now, Courtney is a white woman from, from Northeast Minneapolis. Northeast, not even North she, Minneapolis, from Northeast. Yes, she is. R- I love Northeast, her to death, man. And, she, and she's a wonderful person with a very big heart. And she... I'm going to tell you, man, I was worried about how she was going to manage her testimony in the in the case because I was like, you know, you who could testify about the loss of their loved one, their intimate partner, their life partner, their fiance. Yeah. And 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 she got up there and she did really well and she I th- I told her I said, you know, there's a lot of people who help make the case and you're one of Absolutely. them. Absolutely. So you, you know, guys met at that show. Yeah. It's crazy cuz you know, uh brother Keith, I heard about her. I heard like stories about her. All the time. She's like a mm-hmm. mythical Brother Ali fan, like biggest Brother Ali fan in the world. <laughs> yeah, she and is. And so people would she come you, and be like, the lady that runs my coffee shop and her son are your biggest fans <laughs> in the world. They wear your T-shirts. Right. They won't play anything else on the, on the, on the thing. And so I, I heard about her for years. And, and we had met and things like that. Um, yeah. and, but then after Floyd was killed... Uh, I started seeing protests and I, st- I was seeing a family at the head of the protest all in Brother Ali shirts. And so yeah. I was like, man, I got to figure out who these guys are. So my uh, dear friend, Mike Madsen, who is an MC Madsen from the Unknown Prophet, he, and, a, and a great photographer, he hit me up and he's like a, a, a really well-known like Northeast guy. And he hit me up and he yeah. said, hey, the, so Floyd's fiance was the lady that I've been telling you about. So that's yeah. really when our friendship formed. But I mean, she's traveled all over the country seeing our show. So you met her that night. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, now she will tell you. Mm. Let me tell you this. She would say, "Oh, you came into the coffee shop one time, and I was talking to you." Mm. And I'm like, "Ooh, I'm embarrassed. I don't remember that." But where where she came clear was like, she came to the show because she wanted to see you. Mm. And 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 I'm like, this is great. This is why we do this. Mm-hmm. You know using the attractive power of music, mm-hmm. hip hop, to pull people into a political process. And uh but she and I met there, been friends ever since. You know, she invited me to go talk to the kids at Edison because she had a gig over there too. And uh yeah, that's her. About a year ago when we moved to Istanbul, it was the it's very rare that it snows here. And I was going over, I live on the Asian side, you know, it split the water, like the Bosphorus sure. splits the Asian side and the European oh, yeah, side. Yeah, the Bosphorus, sure. So uh, we live on the Asian side, um, but I'm a like coffee fanatic, 
Like I'm, it's a problem. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm, <laughs> I'm in an Uber going to the European side to buy this like $300 coffee grinder because it's got very specific settings and blah, blah, blah. Right, so right, I'm like, right, right. I'm in the Uber and um, man... So the, they're, they're playing the radio, and he's like, the Uber driver speaks English, which is rare in Istanbul. And her trial, her, her testimony was on the radio, you know? Mm. And so, you know, we're driving, and I'm looking out the window because I'm like, oh, it's snowy. It reminds me of home. It reminds me of Minneapolis, first time seeing snow. And I'm hearing her testify. And I'm sitting there, and, like, my face is just covered in tears. And he turns around, and he's like are you okay? What's wrong? Something wrong? Do you need, you know, whatever? And I said, man, I know her. And they're talking mm. about my neighborhood, you know? And I mm. said, and, and then the Turkish reporter comes on and I hear him talking about the case and da 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 Minneapolis, da 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 George Floyd. And he says, uh, da 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 Keith Ellison, American Muslim man, <laughs> like American Muslim Keith Ellison is heading this case. And I said, man, it's just it's just one of those moments that I probably will never forget, you know. <laughs> you're like, I know the I'm just like, I know all these people. Because you're trying to I'm trying to like tell the person, like, <laughs> right. I know all these people, you know what I mean? Right, and, right, uh, right, right. And so, you know, we get over there and he stopped and he was just like, Are you okay? And the Turks are very like men show affection to other men in this culture. James sure, Baldwin sure. lived here for ten years as a gay man in the sixties and seventies. I did not Off and know on that. for 10 years. I he, thought he was in France. Yeah. They talk about France all the time. We know why. But he spent a lot of time yeah. here. And he was like, man, I've yeah. never been, I've never felt more just left alone to be myself as much as I did in mm. Istanbul. Um, and sure. so he was like, the man like came out and opened my door and, and was like rubbing my back. And he was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah. And he said, in your country, the police shoot the people? And I said, yeah, man. And he was like, yeah. The, the, he was like, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that, and I said, man, but it happens all the time. Like it's not, mm -hmm. it's not a rare occasion. And he said, they, they've been doing this for like 10 years. I said, man, they've been doing it for 450 years, man. Like this yeah. has been going on. For, and he couldn't conceive of that. 